welcome to Morning Charge with Mountain Top Daily Devotional. Today is August 14, 2023. You are welcome. Our topic this morning is the sword of the Spirit, part three. The sword of the Spirit, part three. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you, Father, for the protection and guiding us throughout the previous nights and days. And today we are alive because you are alive. We appreciate your grace and mercies and all the blessings that we have received from you. We pray that the sword of the Spirit, which we know is the Word of God, will continue to prosper in our lives at all times. We shall use this sword to prevail over the enemy and to serve you all the days of our lives. And so shall it be. Thank you, Father, for blessing us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The Sword of the Spirit, Part 3. Our memory verse is taken from the, the book of Jeremiah 1, verses 9 and 10. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, verses uh, 9 and 10. It says then that the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth and said unto me, Behold, I have put my words into thy mouth. See, I have said thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, and to destroy, and to throw down, and to build, and to plant. In a very simple way, it says, the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in, my, in your mouth. See, I have said this day uh, over nations and the kingdom to root out and to pull down. May God bless the memory verse in our hearts. Because we are talking about the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Uh, but the final quote says, A closed mouth is a closed destiny. And the prophetic word for today says, End forth, we shall decree a thing, and it shall be established unto you. And the light shall shine on their ways in the name of Jesus. May that be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's read our fire of scripture. Matthew, Matthew chapter 21, verses 12 and 13. Matthew 21, verses 12 and 13. It says, Then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money of changers and the seed of those who sold doves. And he said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer but you have made it a den of thieves. That is the fire of scripture. Now let's go back to the memory verse of Jeremiah 1, verses 9 and 11. God uses the word, which is the sword of the Spirit, to establish his purpose in the life of prophet Jeremiah and also to establish his ministry. According to this memory verse, Yemah said God put his hand upon him and touched his mouth. God has to put his hand upon Jeremiah and touch his own mouth. And God says, Behold, today I have set you over nations and over kingdoms. In other words, God gave Prophet Jeremiah the authority over all the nations of his time and all the kingdoms of his time. And the purpose that God gave him the sword of the Spirit was for him to root out and to pull down. In other words, whatever God has not planted must be uprooted. Whatever God has not planted must be pulled down. This is to use the sword of the Spirit. They are also to destroy and to throw down. Four issues 
take place here. One, root out, pull down, destroy, throw down. It's after he has done this in preparation, now he will be able to plant, he will be able to build. Without that, nothing would happen. This is why this day, that the word of God is very, very crucial in our lives, in our ministries. Things that need to be uprooted in our lives must be done. Things that need to be pulled down must be pulled down. Things that we have to destroy must be destroyed. And things that have to be thrown down must be done. It's after this that we can now have access to get whatever we want from God because we have done our own work. God has put his word in the mouth of Jeremiah and has touched him and said, Today, I have given you authority, command to over nations and kingdoms. And your job is to pull down. And we know for us to be able to do the work of God very well, there are so many things in our lives, so many things in our ministries, our situation. We pray against ancestral powers. We pull down ancestral shrines. We pull down things that are contrary to the will of God. And we make sure we destroy the works of the enemy in whatever form he may have done in our lives or in our homes so that we can have a great uh, access or straight work doing what God asks us to do. Without that, we will not be able to achieve much for him, ourselves and for the kingdom of God. So it was after God has used his word to deal in the lives of people. And now God used Jeremiah. God gave Jeremiah his word to deal with people who are contrary to the will of God and to throw them down. It was after he had done that, he was willing to build. We build our lives on the word of God. We build our lives on the purposes of God. We build our lives to glorify God and to bring blessing to, to society. So the pattern that God gave to Jeremiah is the same pattern that God has given to us this day. The sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God must be used to pull down the stronghold of, of the enemy, the stronghold of Satan, whether witchcraft power, whether ancestral power, what, whatever they may be, whether environmental power of burning must be pulled down. Those are the forces that block us from getting our breakthroughs. Those are the forces that break us from getting what we ask from God. We have to pull them down. It's our responsibility to pull them down using the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit. So as Jeremiah applied those words of God and deal with people at that time. The same thing that Jesus did. Jesus had, had to go to a temple. Okay? And some people were doing things that were contrary to the will of God. He pulled them down first and declared what was the purpose of the temple, which was to be a house of prayer. Prayer people come to God and ask God to do something in their lives. So if the prophet of old, including Jesus himself, employ God's words effectively, adequately, and appropriately, both in the personal lives and also in their ministries, we have no choice but to follow their pattern, to follow their footsteps, and make sure that the word of God that does not change remains the key for us to use. We read Matthew chapter 24, verse 33. Matthew 24, verse 35, pardon me, which talk about that the word of God remains forever. It does not change. Matthew 24, let me read verse 35. It says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not, will by no means pass away. So the word of God is permanent, is powerful, to the pulling down, to the destruction of power and darkness. So we need to follow that pattern, so that the word of God will continue also to prosper in our, our ministries. When we do so, then we have brought God into our situation. And God will be happy with us at all times. Remember that among the Amos I mentioned in Ephesians chapter 6, the sword of the Spirit is a piece that is good for defensive and offensive. Most part of our battles, offensive, we say in this country that we need to be uh, proactive instead of being active or, or reactive. We must know what is about to happen and then we use the word of God to bring them down and to build where it is necessary and may God help us in Jesus' wonderful name. We shall go on a short break. We shall be back very soon. God bless you. The 2023 70 Days Fasting and Prayers 
of the Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries is on. Fast Breaks, 5 p.m. Mondays and Fridays and 2 p.m. every other day. Remember to get your 70 Days Fasting and Prayer Guide booklet for this event. The 2023 70 Days Fasting and Prayers Prayer Battle 4. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries. Surely the Lord is here. Have you gotten a copy of the 70 Days Fasting and Prayers booklet? Get one today and one for a friend and have a guide into the 70 Days program. Get a copy from any MFM bookshop near you or visit www.mfmebooks.com. Be a part of this divine annual program. The Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministry 70 Days Fasting and Prayers 2023 Prayer Bible 4 Available in English, French, Yoruba, Igbo, Hausa, Ethic and Edo. Jesus is Lord. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries. Surely the Lord is here. Welcome back. We are still dealing with the thought of the Spirit, which is the topic of this morning devotional. I said before we went on a short break that the Bible says that the thought of the Spirit that is mentioned in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 13 through 17, is meant for offensive and defensive. In other words, you have to defend yourself and also to use it to fight. And I said, as we normally say in Nigeria, that there, we should not be reacting, we should be proactive. Proactive means you should be aware of what is about to happen, of what is not normal, and you deal with it at that time. So as Christians, we are not to wait until the enemy brings the fight to us. We are to be proactive, ensuring that God's will stands always with us. So it's better to prevent than to try to solve the problem. As normally say that prevention is better than cure. We need to know that we need to use the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, to be able to fight and to be able to win. Not only to fight, the sword of the Spirit will bring us joy, bring us peace. As we get involved in the personal world, as we are doing right now, your spirit is being built. Your spirit is being built. Your body is being built. And that becomes very, very clear of the testimony that God wants to give in your life. So Jesus adopted offensive nature of the sword when he chased out the people that was having to sell things in the temple. He stood on the word of God that was written, my house shall be a house of prayer. My house shall be a house of prayer. Taken from Isaiah of 56 verse of 7 and effected the necessary change. So today, the Word of God is what we need to transform our lives, to transform our situation, to transform our ministries. Without the Word, we will not be able to go anywhere. So every time we face a situation or we want to do something, we must make sure that we use the Word of God because that is what God knows. That's what God will always apply to help us. So take care of your life and make sure that the word of God prosper in your life and all that you are doing. Similarly, you are to chase out of your life using the word of God and as a guide, whatever does not glorify God. What are those things in your life that does not glorify God that you want to chase them out by using the word of God? Of course, we know that anger is not good. Bitterness is not good. The Bible says, let not, let not this thing be in your life anymore. Take them out by becoming a new man which you are in Christ Jesus. Put them away because it's not part of us. Whatever would defile your life, your ministry, your body, your home, your relationship must be dealt with with the word of God. The sword of the spirit has been given to us as an offensive weapon, but you must, until you use it, it will not work. Until you use the word of God, it will not work. So we need to learn to use the work of God. For example, the Bible says, 
that when we get issues in our lives, we need to take the word of God that says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer, with thanksgiving and supplication. Make our request known unto God. The Bible says, and the peace of God. Now that peace of God is that God has peace that in spite of the wickedness that is seized around the whole world, God still live at peace. It does not deflate him. It does not make him to be not what it's supposed to be. Paul was writing, as I read this morning, in my, in my other, other devotion, that there was a, a lot of trouble in the church. But Paul reminded the Christians that they need to stand still and do not wave away. Because those things that we are passing through now, as Peter said, are not to be compared in what we are going to enjoy in the presence of God in eternity. And that is that important to encourage us to keep us, to know for sure that God is going to keep us. The people of the church of Thessalonica were afraid because the Christians were dying. And they remember that uh, they were saying that Jesus will return very soon. And so they were, why are they dying? Where are they going to be? It was misunderstanding. So, so Paul had to use the, the word of God, the sword of the Spirit. Say, no, don't worry. Those who have slept in the Lord, which is a figure of saying, those who have died before Christ comes, they will be the first to rise up when the trumpet will sound at the time of rapture. The Bible says the trumpet will sound and they will rise up first and will join them. And say, take this word and comfort one another. When we are in distress, we need to go back to the word of God. As I was saying here, the master word of God is what is to do. You will master the use of the word of the sword of the spirit by studying God's words daily. By meditating on God's words. By confessing God's words. By using God's word in every situation in your life. The word of God applied to every aspect of life, whether big or small, whatever. No matter what happened. If you have an issue between you and your brother, the word of God has given us what we should do. Maybe somebody has offended you. The word of God has given us that we need to forgive that person as Christ has forgiven us. Because if you don't go ahead and forgive, God himself will not be willing to to forgive you. Maybe you want to do something. You have to pray about it. Use the word of God. That God says he will be with you. He will grant, grant you access. Say, call upon me at the time of trouble. I will be with you. And I will show you great and wonderful things that you have not known. And you will glorify me. Those are the word of God. And Jesus said, when you want to do things, ask. Ask and it shall be given. When we ask God, God will give to us. I was saying, wait, wait a minute. Don't ask the miss. Ask with a purpose that will bring glory unto God and God will give you. So we need to study the word of God. We need to apply the word of God. We need to confess the word of God. And we need to make sure that we stand on the word of God. But that is the only word that abides forever. Every other thing of changes. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can stand. And God will always be with us. We need to remind one another. What are times of goodness? But the time of things are not going well, that it is only, only the word of God that gives us assurance and encouragement at all times. God is always ready to show us mercy when we abide in his word. Yes, the word of God abides forever. And that word will always be with us as we trust him, as we abide with him. We need to study the word as I said earlier. We need to read the word of God. We need to meditate upon the word of God. We need to confess the word of God. We need to stand by the word of God. We need to proclaim the word of God. The sword of the spirit is only life. Whatever I want to do, who I want to pray for somebody, we use the word of God to pray. The Bible says this is going to happen. And the Bible says that you, God has given authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. And he says nothing shall by any means hurt you. So we have to stand on that promise of God. As we see here, God told Jeremiah, say, I'll give you power to root out, to pull down, to throw down. After that, you now build and you now plant. Let me ask you a question. I'll ask myself, have you pulled down those things in your life that do not please God? 
that stand against you at an entrance. As you deal with those things by confessing them and asking him, God, to forgive you and enter into a new life with him and a new relationship. It's after that you have done that, you now build up your life. Be your life in the Holy Faith. Be your life in the Word of God. Be the new life in Christ. Those things of the past has passed away. You are now a new man. It's then you can build up your heart, your relationship with God, with your family, the members of the body of God. That's the time you build your ministry more and more and establish it. And then it will be stand because if you build your ministry on the things that are not of God, it will not stand. But it will only stand when you build it on the power and authority of God. And I pray that at this time, God needs men and women who are willing to use his word, who are willing to abide in his word, who are willing to allow the word of God to penetrate into their inner mind and bring out things that are right. Jeremiah will say something here in his book here that there was a time he was not happy because of what he was going to, what he was going through. So he didn't, he didn't want to speak the word of God again. But, but he said that when he stopped that, there was fire inside him that says, no, you must stand up and you must do it. And, and we do. And he has not, he was not able to stop it until he came back again and do what the Lord wants. And that is also applicable to every one of us. May God help us as we walk with him in these days and allow his plan to be fulfilled in our lives. We shall go on a short break. We shall be back very soon. God bless you mightily. In Jesus' name. Amen. Determined to move your family from mockery to miracles. Break every jinx and spell working against your family. Destroy every evil pattern working against your family. Break every family curse working against your family. Receive stolen and lost glory off your family. Put your family in the envelope of the God of Elijah. These six powerful agendas will be dealt with on the 9th, 16th, and 23rd of August, 2023. It's the August Special Man Water Service. See on Cage Your Family. Dr. D.K. Olukoya, the General Overseer, Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries, will be ministering live from the MFM International Headquarters, Lagos, Nigeria, 0430 p.m. W.A.T. The August Special Man Water Trio. Come reposition your family with these divine steps. Align to put a family in place. This program will be available on all our social media platforms Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Mixlayer. Don't forget MFM Television. Come fasting to this program with a list of family names, a bottle of oil, and of course, a bottle of water. Jesus is waiting for you. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries. Surely the Lord is here. Yeah, welcome back. We are still on the subject of the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. I am happy with you that we can share together the Word of God this morning. And we can see what God has done in your life through the Word. And throughout this day, is that word that will sustain and keep you and myself. So we need to always stand on the word, always provide ourselves with that word that will bring a, a lot of things to us. And beloved, to be a Christian is to be a warrior. God has graciously given us the sword of the Spirit, which is His word. So we are to take the sword of the Spirit and attack and also defend ourselves from all the forces and power of darkness. I would say we should not be ignorant of the devices of the devil. It comes in different ways. I also say we should re resist and he will run away from us. So we thank God that in the past you have been resisting the enemy. That's why you are still standing in faith. God expects you myself also to continue to walk and stand on his word so that we can see the reward at the end of the day. Also, we need to take the sword of the Spirit to cut down evil tree that is growing in the garden of our lives. So we need to identify it, use it to destroy the work of Satan 
and enforced God's dominion here on earth. It is your weapons that is unchangeable that will bring you victory at all times. So everyone that participate this in this morning devotional, I pray that the Lord God Almighty will always be with you and grant you success and your testimony shall be very, very great no matter what happened because God is a great God. Let's go back to that of scripture which has given to us. Uh, Jeremiah says, you pull down and they ask you a question. When last did God give his word to you in a special manner? Of course, our devotional this morning is the word of God. Your Bible reading is the word of God. When you listen to the word of God in terms of preaching and teaching, it's the word of God. The time God will speak to you in a very specific way on issues that pertain to your life, that pertain to your ministry. Those are the moments that you now take the word of God and use it again more and more. So when last did you have a conversation with God about your, your, your situation that you are going through now, whether in times of joy or in times of conflict, what is it going on now in your life? And that is a question asking. By the word of God, the Lord will help you to overcome all those kinds of, of situations and temptations. And by doing so, you will be a point of contact to others who are also looking for. And when you pray, you thank God for being faithful to, to, to you through his word. God is always faithful and he will remain faithful. We also have to pray, ask God to settle everything in our life by the power of his word and it shall be well with you, it shall be well with your family. Also, I have to pray that the Lord of God will take the word of God to as a step for your life every time. For the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord God Almighty. And I pray that the will of God will be done in your life as you apply the word of God, the sword of the Spirit, and God will reward you mightily in this life and also in the life that will come. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for reminding us about the importance of your word. We ask that you give us grace to use your word as proactive of situations, pulling down the stronghold of the kingdom of darkness and asking victory over every situation that confronts us. We pray that the glory of the Lord shall be our portion. As we carry the presence of God at all times, we also carry your word. Your word speaks, your word heals, your word heals, your word delivered. So we thank you, Father, for, for the word that delivers, for the word that saves, and for the word that set us free, and for the word that helps us to fight the good fight of faith and the victory that we have in Christ Jesus. It is well and shall be well with you all the days of your life. God bless you mightily in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to thank God for all of you who were part of this morning devotional. And I pray that God will continue to encourage you and keep you and sustain you and make his word to become real, real more and more in your life, all the days of your life. Thank you for being with us. Join us next time again. God bless you mightily. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God for the miracle of sleeping and waking up. I decree that today it shall be well with you in the name of Jesus. The Lord God that dwelleth in Zion will move you forward in a new way in the mighty name of Jesus. No evil shall befall you this day, neither shall any plague move near your camp. Wherever you go, the favor of the Almighty shall be upon you. Your life shall be plugged into the socket of divine favor, divine restoration in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All the evil present in this day, I bind them and I cast them out. You shall not be part of the evil that is spreading around in the name of Jesus. The Lord will make you head and never detail in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I soak the whole of this day in the blood of Jesus. I soak the whole of this day in the blood of Jesus. You are going in your coming out shall be blessings. The hand of God shall be mighty upon you. I cover you and your family with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Have a wonderful day, beloved. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen.